Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Forrest Stevens, and together with Andrea Gahn, uh, I'm here from the University of Louisville. And uh, uh, we're representing the World Pop Project. Uh, Nerev Patel is also here from the uh, George Mason University. And, and we're sort of the, the representatives from a large group, a collaborative group, uh, led by Andy Tatum at the University of Southampton, producing uh, what we hope you'll find are, are really useful data sets. Uh, the, the large goal, or the sort of the, the uh, original goal of the World Pop Project was to produce high-resolution, uh, contemporary, gridded population data sets. Um, and, you know, derived from census data uh, that, you know, is, is sort of at a, a sometimes relatively coarse uh, aerial unit, and, and, you know, we really need these population data sets to underlie and, and, and become the denominator for these types of, of analyses like uh, epidemiological modeling, um, risk and hazards associated with, uh, you know, natural hazards, uh, you know, use, the, use these data to really support efforts that, you know, we've, we've heard a lot about today. So I want to talk a little bit about sort of the methodological issues that, that we use to produce these data sets. Uh, you know, the, the large goal, like I, you know, said was to take, you know, something that's collected at the administrative unit level. Uh, census data, population counts, uh, demographic information, and really disaggregate that to a much finer gridded level, right? And so what we see here in, in northern Vietnam is a, a disaggregation of census data collected at relatively coarse administrative units down to 100 meter by 100 meter pixel sc uh, scales uh, that makes sort of feeding into those other types of analyses, the, the you know looking at, at you know disease and and uh, risk mapping, et cetera, uh, a much more useful and and uh, hopefully uh, you know beneficial uh, outputs at, at finer spatial resolutions. So from a, uh, sort of a methodological standpoint, um, how we do this is you know is is you know really important with how the data are eventually used, and so. Just to work through this, and you know, in a, in a broad sense, uh, you know, if if you want more and more detail, uh, I've included a citation here for a paper that describes the current methodology in a lot more detail. Uh, but we take ancillary covariates that are highly correlated with where people live on the, the landscape. Things like distance to roads, distance to road intersections, land cover, land use. Uh, you know, things, you know, biophysical factors, slope, elevation, uh, climate-related uh, information, uh, you know, social things uh, such as, you know, uh, distance to uh, health facilities, distance to libraries, ATMs, anything that we can, we can find at a country level that will correspond temporally to those data that, that uh, we have on the, the census information. We feed that into and aggregate that back to the census uh, administrative boundary level, uh, use a random forest uh, model to generate uh, per pixel predictions that we then use from a, a sort of a top-down approach to dazymetrically redistribute those census unit counts to the grid uh, you know, scale. And all of this is based on open, uh, open code, you know, programmed mostly in R and Python. And you know, up until just recently, this has been backed by a lot of ArcGIS-specific code. Uh, and uh, with a, a Google Faculty Research Award, we've uh, you know, transitioned all of this to uh, you know, away from that, that sort of proprietary environment to an environment that we can run on uh, Compute Engine and, and hopefully Container Engine instances. Uh, and the, the you know again we use this in our own work for disaggregating at that grid scale to age and sex structures, uh, looking at maternal and newborn health, poverty mapping, and even more dynamic things. Uh, but hopefully, the the big picture here is that this is all going into uh, the Earth Engine. Uh, it's it's there now in sort of a beta form, uh, and, you know. And, and I, I warn you against getting too too married to it at this this uh, point because it will be changing rapidly as we ingest the rest of the data. So thank you very much. mentioned to you yesterday that I use your data sets all the time for flood hazard mapping and we've been trying to use it at, for some social vulnerability inputs and I'm sort of curious uh, beyond the population indicators some of the other 
data like poverty and income, how are you downscaling that? Well, a lot of that is driven by those, uh, you know, census-related information that we have at, at that, uh, you know, at, at that unit type level. Uh, there are more sophisticated models that underlie some of that disaggregation that uh, are geostatistical approaches, um, you know, and, and those again are using our population data as the denominator to kind of, uh, you know, disaggregate some of those those uh, you know modeling efforts. But but that's a, a little bit different type of approach than than is outlined here for the population data sets. Hi, uh, just a question, what road data are you using? Uh, it depends on the country. Uh, a lot of times we're relying on open street map data. Uh, you know, ideally we will use the best available data on a per country basis that co corresponds temporally, uh, or, or at least as close as we can expect, temporally to the census data that we're using. So it's wonderful to see population data in Google Earth Engine, because it's already there, and I've been fooling around with it. Uh, the one challenge I see, though, with your approach is that you appear to be optimizing locally for the best data you have in each country, which will produce a globally inconsistent data set uh, that will make it impossible to compare across nations. Uh, and I wonder you know, whether you're planning to create some kind of balanced product that is comparable across nations? Yeah, that's that's a, a really good point. And, and you know, as this evolves, we're currently you know working on a, a new plan that is to scale this this data production uh, effort up to a global product. So you know, you, you might have noticed in the the current data that we're missing those highly developed nations where you've got really highly you know. Uh, spatially explicit census data anyway. Uh, but we're going to create a, a much more uniform process that uses uniform uh, sets of covariates for that global product, still at the 100 meter pixel scale. But yeah, there's a, an evolving effort there uh, that we'll, we'll post more information about as soon as that, that firms up. 